You've done well, lad. I'm sorry for your loss. You must be all done in. Why don't you go to the kitchen and have a good meal? Sorrow is easier to bear on a full stomach. I heard about your father. They say he was a swordsmith who moved to the countryside to make horseshoes. I can't understand why he'd waste his talents, but I'm sure he had his reasons. He had a fine reputation. It's a great loss. Ah, milady. You are fortunate our good lady Stephanie of Talmberg has graced us with her presence. My lady, I'm honored. So this is our brave young man. Welcome, lad. Bojana here will take care of you. No doubt you're tired and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. How could he not be, poor soul? After everything he's been through, he must be as hungry as a bear. Aren't you, young master? Here you are, then. Eat your fill. And a little wine to wash it down. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> when you're done, you can go and rest with the grooms in the outer bailey. No, that won't do, Sir Robard. After all he's been through, he deserves a proper bed. Let him sleep in a lodge in the courtyard. Certainly, my lady. Young Henry here is overwhelmed by your generosity. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, my lady. May God reward you for your kindness. Eat up now. You're in capable hands, so I'll leave you to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, ma'am. When you've done, you can sleep in the bedchamber of the courtyard lodge. And don't forget to take off those filthy boots before getting into bed. You fled from Scarlet's? How did you get that? Yes? It is I, Henry. Forgive the intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady... Uh, um... 
No, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, um, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a servant. I was going to, but to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace, to let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry, I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. Although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it. If you feel like it. You might be right, my lady. I'll tell you what happened. It was terrible and unexpected. The day started just like any other. Father sent me into town on some errands. I went to the tavern to buy ale for Father. I know it's a job for a groom, but I didn't mind. Because my girl Bianca worked there. I courted her a while and we agreed to meet in the evening. But our meeting was never to happen. Oh dear boy. When I'd done all the errands, I headed back home. I promised Father I'd help him with his work, and I was looking forward to it. He was forging a sword for Sir Radzik. The sword was taking shape when Sir Radzik himself came to have a look at it. He praised Father's work and said that with his smithing skills, he could easily make a living in Prague or Vienna. You don't say. But Sigismund's horde was already on the horizon ready to attack the town. A horde of soldiers was amassed. Pennants flapped in the wind, the armor glinted in the sunlight and the horses whinnied impatiently. They were waiting for Sigismund to give the command to attack. How awful. And then death descended on Scalitz. I looked towards the tavern and saw a group of humans chasing down my Bianca, murdering her for sport. There was nothing I could do to help her. You mustn't blame yourself. She's with the Lord now. I ran to the castle like our neighbours to take cover, but I didn't make it. I had to find another way to save myself. The men on the battlements called down to me to flee to Talmberg and warn you. I was lucky I knew a concealed path around the castle. I ran as if my life depended on it, which it did. But my guardian angel watched over me and I made it to the mill below the castle. It's as well you did. The Lord be praised. Then I heard a scream. It was Teresa, the mill wench. She'd been caught by a gang of human savages who planned to violate her. I had Sir Radzik's sword. And even though there were several of them, and they were better armed, I had to try and save her. I wanted there to be at least one person I'd help. And I succeeded, even though it almost cost me my life. After that, I stole a horse from them and rode off. Really? I'll never forget the horror. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. That's terrible. 
something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. Poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy, and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me and my husband either. Although in comparison to the horrors he went through. I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Probislavets, and killed many of our men, even the old chamberlain. He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old, and all of a sudden, I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from Divish's friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom. And only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Havel punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir Dibish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly. Only he has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg. After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you're still young and beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. Bothering you with this, you have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my lady. Henry, wake up. You don't want to miss this. What is it? 
What's happening? Come to the battlements. One of our patrols reported a company heading here from Skellis. Think of that. Not that I'm spoiling for a fight, but if I have to choose a place for it, then right here behind the solid walls is it. True enough. If you've really got such a big army, you might not even hold out against the first offensive. Tomberg's a strong castle, though. It can handle a siege. The best thing would be to join forces with Scarlet's and like Sigismund's bastards of the face in there. That's probably why they attacked so quick, so we wouldn't have time to join forces. Ah, you might be right. For sure Sigismund ain't no fool. A backstabbing swine, maybe. But no fool. You're right there. Good day to you. What's happening? Have you heard anything? No. It could be Sigismund's army. Or his scouts, or maybe Scarlet's folk who survived the pillaging. May the Lord watch over you. My respects. What's happening? No. Could be Sigmund. day to you. Do you know what's happening? I don't know, but I think I saw horsemen. Probably Sigismund and his mercenaries come to brave us. Good luck to you. What's going on? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why would Sigismund advance on Talmud in the night? 
Especially since he's lost the element of surprise after the rain on scouts. Then who is it? The scouts Jivish sent to Scarlet, the spy on Sigismund, said he'd set up camp and was getting ready to storm the castle. And Sir Radzig is an experienced soldier. He'd surely hold the castle for quite some time. It doesn't make sense. What else did this guy say? Not much of anything. Before they could get close enough, this huge storm started. And you were right. Sigismund has a hell of a lot of soldiers, including all manner of mercenaries. An army like that costs a fortune. Well, anyway, we'll find out when they get here, won't we? Aye, we will. Take care. Halt! Who goes there? Lucifer and all his minions! Who else, Robert? Sir Ansig! What a relief. Is his lordship there with you? Yes, sir. He is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Rantic, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slick throat. I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you? He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Thank God. A brave young man. But tell me, friend, how on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left the storm into the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. What will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Skalix. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish? Make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. <laughs> I've seen you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend, and good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people, too. It's a dark time. Tonight we'll have triple patrol. Sort out the watches between you as always. And if I catch anyone boozing, playing dice or slacking off, I'll personally break every bone in his body. I want you to keep a close eye on everything nearby. Sigismund will surely have sent spies, and likely men as well, to follow the Scalots people, now he knows they've fled. Keep your eyes peeled. 
Report everything to me at once. Understood? What do you think about the flight of the Scullets, folk? I'd say Sir Rodzik is a fine lord. He made the most of the situation, and you don't see that very often. He was lucky that big storm came. But that's just it. Something happens by chance, and you turn it to your advantage. There's not many capable of thinking so fast. Henry, I need to have a word with you. What is it you need? I could use an extra pair of eyes. Yours are key. Will you keep watch for the battlements, my men? Is that a request or an order? I'd rather it was a request you answered yesterday. Of course I'll help. I have to pay you back somehow after all you've done for me. Splendid. And don't worry. I'll tell the men to relieve you later. Take care. Then. Wandering around like a stray sheep. Must be your first watch, eh? I don't think anything much will be happening today. You can just lean against the wall and wait till morning. I'll show you what's what. I will. Thank you. What do you think about how the Scarlet's folk managed to get away? Sigismund must be seething with rage. It's just a shame Fortune didn't smile on all of them. Oh, shit. Sorry. And you know Sir Radzik Kobola? I wouldn't say I know him. I've seen him a few times. Why do you ask? He must be a fine lord. Takes such good care of every one of his serfs. 
Surely all the lords do that. Ah, I could tell you some stories. About Sir Divis? Jesus, no. I didn't mean it like that. Just that I heard stories from other soldiers that would make your skin crawl. I see. Good luck to you. See how the self-appointed king wins the love and respect of his loyal subjects. Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. 
Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. Shit. That's the bastard who let the attack of Scarlet and kill my parents. Don't be an idiot. Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Bart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Mark Bart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king, and here in Taunberg, divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, his majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, the Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Scarlet's mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik of which you speak is the king's hetman at Scarlet's. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talberg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle where he has little chance of defense to another where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king then that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Tarnberg and that he has your loyalty. Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intentions of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and good will may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robart. True enough. Ever since Sigismund conquered Kuttenberg, you can't even trust common pilgrims anymore. There's that many brigands roaming around, you never know if you'll come home from the fields alive. And the nobles are doing nothing about it. Aye, 
not a thing. Make it quick, though. I don't care much for your scent. Can we trade? If you've got the coin. Good day to you. Is there someone here? Votava's your man. He's the local dealer, a skinny fellow. I saw him by the granite. <laughs> if he... What do you think about Sigismund? It was a stroke of good luck. I know everyone says how clever Sir Divish is and all that, but it was a dangerous situation. That Sigismund is awful unpredictable. He abducts the king, raids towns, Brings foreign mercenaries into the heart of our country. God alone knows what he'll get up to next. Good luck to you. And we have two popes. I will be stricken like Sodom and Gomorrah. I pray you're wrong. It doesn't matter. No match for one of them heathens. One of the soldiers saw an unarmed crow man cornered by a bar. Nobody could do that. God be with you. Sigismund's visit. And no mistake. That army of his is enormous. It's a good thing Sir Divish is such a fine speaker, or they'd have squashed us like bugs. Goodbye. Don't worry. Say. Out the woods any time now and slaughter us all. I'm honored that a knight such as you takes an interest in me.
need to get out of here. Says who? I've never seen you before in my life. And that's odd, seeing as how you're wearing our colors. Cut the horse shit and let me out. You're not here to ask questions. Or would you like Sir Robard to find out you're holding up Sir Divish's messenger? Oh, all right, all right. May the Lord watch over you. Hey! Open the gate! How are you? Bye. Greetings. If I needed some food, who... Who do you think, young man? Me, of course. And if you want something extra, I could help you out with that too. I'd like to buy something from you. Of course, lad. Good luck then. I'm honored that a knight God be with you. My lady. God be with you. I'm sorry. Do I know you? <laughs> it's me, my lady. Henry. 
heavens above, Henry? Why are you dressed like that? I have to bury my parents, but the guards won't let me through the gate. But you mustn't. You'll be killed. Sigismund's army has moved out. I can't just sit here. I just have to go. I still think you should stay here in the safety of the castle, Henry. But I see your heart is drawing you away from here. God go with you. My lady, I hope you weren't unduly distressed by the arrival of Sigismund's army this morning. Well, it was to be expected. And thanks to God's mercy and my good husband, there was no more bloodshed. But it's something else that distresses me. Maybe my mind deceives me. But I have an evil foreboding. You, my lady? Surely not. No evil could possibly come to you. I fear something bigger and worse will come. That Sigismund is only another omen of imminent evil. Of great evil. one day. Is someone there? Jesus Christ be praised. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalitz and then come here too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Radzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas' allies. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well, I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears. And I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed. But it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad. These are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair. Him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobs. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kuttenberg? Why do you think? I 
I suppose, because it has a strategic position and good fortifications, so it can be used as a base for raids, giving you control of the whole territory and good defences too, if, if you need them. <laughs> Not at all. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city, while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia, in the entire Holy Roman Empire. He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kutenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favoured it. Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kutenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kutenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas's most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. So, Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. Never mind. 